trashed, melted. Look at that. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Flat. Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm excited because it's that time of year that I can get my greenhouse back in action. It is full of spider webs and leaves and you name it, dirt among other things and melted pieces and parts. So I had some ideas to spiffy this greenhouse up in the fall and I bought some cute little LED lights and they melted in the summer. That's how hot it gets in here. But I also have some plans for the floor. I've got a cute little stencil. So I wanna come in here and get this floor redone. Um, but before I can do all those cute things, I've gotta get my yard cleaned up. So we're gonna be doing some fall cleanup. And again, just vacuuming and getting it ready for my meth lab, oh, AKA seedlings, that are in my house right now, just taking up my entire study. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me. And if you're new to my channel, I am so glad you're here. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. Make sure you turn on all those notifications and subscribe so you never miss a video. All right, hope you guys stay tuned. Just a quick recap of this awesome greenhouse from Costco. Several of the improvements we made were um, adding electrical so we can heat it in the winter time. And we do have a fan in here to help with circulation, but it just gets way too hot in the summer. Um, there is a panel down there. This is a foam board insulation that we cover it in in the winter when it just gets way too cold outside. Um, some other improvements we added were a uh, drip system that we connected to the outside sprinklers just so that I don't have to come in here and water every single time. So um, I'll link the video to that. What we did was just piped it into our current sprinkler system. It comes through the floor and then runs up. There's an on and off switch here. And um, I have yet to hook up more sprinklers because we just have not needed to use it just yet but through the winter i'll definitely be using it this has been through some pretty significant hailstorms. it has not broken through any of the panels that were sent with it um, we did get some golf ball golf ball size hail uh, and so the fact that it can um, sustain that is pretty impressive in my book um, another thing we did we added this screen but when I contacted the manufacturer, they were so kind as to send me a screen that they are now providing with this model. So that, um, that's something that we'll try to get in. It looks like you screw in the snaps and then it snaps into place. So we may just go ahead and keep both as an extra preventative to keep bugs from coming in here. Um, the last thing we did was we added caulking all on the exterior in these areas that were allowing um, my ladybugs and to escape and bad bugs to come in. Uh, but anyways, yep, you can see how messy it starts to get. All right, well, let's get this baby cleaned up. Remnants of all of my seeds. Obviously, these are just envelopes or I wouldn't be keeping them out here. Oh, well, actually, they're seeds. Oh my goodness. Ah. Uh, how can I waste them like that? Oh, I get so mad at myself sometimes. Oh well, darn it. Okay. And get everything off the floor so when I vacuum then we'll just trade and everything on these shelves can go on the floor so I went to clean out the greenhouse and we don't have a filter on the wet back so my kind husband is running to Home Depot to go get a filter so I can get that done 
because that was going to be my big project today. So I had to put that on hold, but I will get back to it. In the meantime, I'll get these sweet potato vines trimmed up so we can cut the grass and then clean up this highest of bean vine that is growing into all of the other plants. Maybe I'll get lucky. This petunia is still showing signs of life, so I'm going to trim it up, fertilize it, and hope it comes back. When it's not hosting butterflies, I like to trim my parsley into little balls. Hey, Luz. She does know she's on camera, huh? <laughs> you know, I wore these boots a couple of weeks ago in one of my stories and had so many people ask about them. You can get them at Green Acres. They're so darn cute and so comfy. So a lot of these boots don't have supports in them, but these support my foot pretty good. So um, I did ask the company if they'd be willing to give a discount. And so there is a discount, I think 15%. Um, down in the comment section. Um, you can get them online. They have them at Green Acres. So many cute ones, but you all know I have a thing for chickens. So of course I got the chicken ones. Let's give you a little close up though. Look at that. Is that so cute? <laughs> Pulling out the zinnia because it is not adding anything. I haven't been cutting it. It's not one of my favorites, so. Ugh. Ugh. So we did put these trellises up kind of late. And so in the meantime, it was all growing into each other, but it is so heavy. I can't figure out where. Hmm. Let's see. Got my handy dandy Velcro, so that should do the trick. Y'all should smell right here. There's all this mint along. Oh my gosh, it smells heavenly. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and cut some strips. All right. Don't let this video fool you. That took me 20 minutes to do that. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. All right. Have a Vitex volunteer coming up right here. Man, oh man, look at that. Anybody want a Vitex tree? So back in my skeleton garden, I've got tons of pots that were trying to root things that obviously did not root, but this Vitex it's like a weed it will root so i'm gonna cut it strip most of the leaves and i'm not gonna let it branch just yet so i'm going to keep it on a single stem like this put the bulbs back in there so my coleus just keeps going to flower um, I know, didn't necessarily want that, so I just keep trimming the flowers off, hoping it keeps just filling out. So pretty. These were from Baker Seeds. And they did well. I'll probably just keep doing them each year. I love the color tones. I'm going to deadhead my cannas, because same, I feel like these ugly, ugly seed heads take away from how pretty the canna could be. And it just looks a lot neater when they aren't filled with spent seed heads. So, As you can see, my amazing rose was in seriously beautiful full bloom but it's time to get the blooms off. Dad had this fellow. I'm just gonna kind of clean it up 
Maybe I'll get another flush of blooms. Right above five leaves is what I'm doing. So I'm training this little coleus tree. And by little, it is pretty little, but it's cute. And then look at this first lane. Let me take you around. Look at the flower on that, how pretty. Isn't that so pretty? So if you've been watching some of our videos, you know we're gonna be taking out most of the grass, but one of the reasons is I've got these adorable drift roses, peach drift roses, they're hidden back here. And I'd like to get them out um, as the trees have grown. Let me show you what's up above. This area has just become too much shade. So it's trees everywhere up here. And so they are going to be, all right, let me try that again. Okay, so they, we're going to get them out of this area and put them in the backyard where we're gonna be removing a lot of the grass. This will give them more sun. And then back here, I think we'll put a bridal wreath spirea to fill this spot. It'll get enough sun and shade to do what it needs to do to be beautiful. Here's my other magnificent bridal wreath. It gets huge. I love the whimsical nature of it just branching and flowing in the wind. There's nothing more beautiful. So I think having another one in that corner is going to be amazing. This hosta, it is pretty crisp through and through. So I'm just going to cut it into a nice circle. And maybe just pull out the dead stuff. I have found that fall cleanup helps a bit with the keeping the insects at bay just because in the spring, um, just because you've gotten rid of some of the dead brush that they might want to house themselves in. I'm not saying it's a foolproof method, I'm just saying I have found it to be helpful. These hostas need to be divided terribly. I have really been slacking. Some of my houses still look amazing. Let me show you what's going on back here. The houses that got absolute full shade are obviously doing the best. This one back here is also beautiful. So I'm going to cut this coleus so it can be seen. The coleus does like to overtake things. Actually, I'm just going to cut it all the way down because now it just looks silly. Actually, let's just pull it up like the hosta. <laughs> do its thing. Something keeps coming in our yard back here, making me so annoyed. I keep burying the hole and the hole just keeps getting dug back up. So I don't know what critter is making itself at home, but it's so frustrating. My Gerbert's pretty amazing, guys. Look how cute these flowers are. Isn't that so cute? So they just take a lot of, um, they are heavy feeders and they like to be deadheaded. So you can give them some summer maintenance. 
they'll bloom all summer long for you in the 100 degree temps. I usually cut the heads off a lot earlier than this one. I just haven't been able to get out there. I just haven't been able to get out here, but definitely worth having in your garden. You just have to know to give it a little more like a um, weekly feeding is typically what I do, but it's so worth it. So for this amazing heliotrope, I haven't had to do anything for it other than to stake it. It does like to fall over. So I put these half loops, which I have uh, linked in my storefront underneath them just to support them. They tend to just get top heavy and fall down. So this helps quite a bit. Um, and I am hoping they recede. I heard that was something that they like to do. So I'm hoping they recede and fill this spot for next year. But um, honestly, I'm impressed with these babies. So this is the Proven Winners Augusta Lavender Heliotrope. And I haven't had to do, do anything, really. Um, like I said, a few fertilizing with the rest of the groups and then that is it. I did cut it back when I first planted it because when I got them they were leggy but I haven't had to deadhead or cut back or do anything since then so. So just pulling out a lot of the dead debris under the day lilies. reach in there and pull up you'll get a lot of the dead stuff into your hands snails do love to hide in this stuff too so if you have a slug and snail problem you definitely want to try to get in there so if any of you have watched some of my garden tours, you'll know I had a beautiful flower right here and it has just been struggling. Um, something just didn't make sense. And I know in my yard when that happens, there's typically a mole under it. So I pulled it up to move it and mostly just to see what was under it. And sure enough, there's a fresh mole tunnel. So I put my gopher hawk and my fingers are crossed that I can catch him. But um, I know it was an active tunnel that day, but I don't know if it's a continuous active tunnel for him. So we will see. Uh, over here, I have another Rubecchia that is just struggling. And so again, I feel like it's possibly where my little mole friend's hanging out because when something's doing well and then all of a sudden it just stops, to me, it's a clear indication that there's a bigger problem than water or heat, especially when the rest of them are doing fine in the same area. Um, so again, that's living with moles and that's being a gardener. But I did put the cone flower over here as I have a big drift. Um, so hoping these Rebecca just reseed and make a happy home over here. Anyways, I'm hoping this one can survive. Okay, so these are the ones that I grew from seed last year and put in in the spring and look how beautiful and healthy they are. This is the one that has been amazing over the past few years. It's where I got the seed for these and that's what it looks like. So I do like to just keep a nice little ball shape on these Nagastrum. Kind of an ongoing process, but it's my garden, that's what I like to do. I find it to be very therapeutic to come out here and keep it the way I like it. I also like to go in the spring with a nice tight form and that way they don't become leggy and just show uh, sticks in the center. This way they kind of fill out a little bit nicer
my salvia, I do keep it trimmed up like a tree. When it gets heavy, it falls over and that's when I just come trim it a few more times. Get those lower ones off. But it does have those round, same thing I do the heliotrope with. It has those round stakes to keep it upward. And sometimes it just moves the stake and I'll just move it further back to keep it upright there. And I'm doing that so my ajuga can really thrive. I think I also need to just do a quick deadhead because it probably will be putting on some new blooms, clean it up. It already has some new flowers on it. So one thing I said I would do was cut the rose shoots that are shooting through my tree and I have yet to do that. So I'm just gonna do it section by section because now there's several spots that are growing into my tree. And honestly, if I could just throw them over the fence, that's what I would do. So. All right, the good thing about the Katrina Rose is there it doesn't have thorns. Or if it does, they're just so sparse, you don't, they don't hurt you. So it's real easy to move, trim, train. And I just want it to, not grow into this tree so I do need to come and trim up my tree as well oops look at these how did that happen oh my goodness I don't know guys what should I do here I really do need a ladder don't I so another change we need to make this fall is this spirea I planted it there and did not realize how forward growing it would grow. If you see, I have stakes trying to pull it forward. I'm sorry, pull it back because it was growing on top of my flocks. So I'm going to have to dig that up and move it back so that if it grows forward, it has space. I didn't intend for all of that empty space to be there. Um, so that will be moving. This flocks, I'm just going to leave it as is. It does. Uh, have some pretty potential for winter interest. And this clematis, you can see all the new growth. So I just kind of come in and I just crinkle the old growth away, y'all. I know that makes no sense, but it helps me see where the new growth has started and where nice cleanup for spring. So um, I may not even touch it, so it'll just depend on how I feel, but you can see all the new growth at top, which is not where I want it all. So if I can clear some of this out, I might get some growth or more growth down here, as you can see. So and all together going into the fall, I'm pretty happy with everything. All right, well, my husband got the filter so I can finally get started on the greenhouse.
So what I would like to do is to put the stencil on the blocks here. And I've got a really cool kind of a deep forest green and just stencil this on. I want to go ahead and just put cement blocks throughout. So get we um, like to get rid of the terracotta and just have this on every other block in a checkerboard type pattern. So I think that'll be cute. It definitely needs to cool down more because it's still just so hot in this greenhouse right now. All right, not bad if I do say so myself. Nice and clean, ready for the seedlings, but yeah, still too hot to put them out here. But at least we're ready and I can get this floor done as soon as it starts to cool off, so. All right, thanks for joining me. You guys have a great day. See you in the next one.